everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to a color challenge. I gave the Chemnitz patrons a selection of different color palettes and let them vote on the one that they would like to see me play around with most to dye multiple different colorways of yarn. I like to split these color challenges into two different parts. In the first one, I will dye three different types of colorways, at least three, in inspired by the selected palette that I'll show in a moment. And then for the second video, I'm letting the Chemnitz patrons vote on the techniques they most want to see with the selected palette. Now the rules of this are fast and loose. For the first video, the goal is to be able to see all three colors in each of the colorways I create, with the exception of if I'm doing some kind of tonal, then I can have a set and have the colors sort of separated there. White can be a fourth color, uh, and not all the colors need to be used at equal amounts. I can play around with the depth of shade. So if we have a black as a color, I could make it a pastel gray, and that still counts. <laughs> Some blending might happen due to the nature of the different techniques, but I can't force it for the first round. So if there is a orange, I can't take, you know, one tiny fleck of it, add it to a purple and say, okay, that's good. That color is technically there. Uh, I want it to be a contributor. <laughs> but really the goal of this is to have fun and to show the range of different kinds of colorways you can create with one palette. Go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon if you want to help vote in polls like this to help shape the direction of videos in the future. And Patreons get early access to the Dye Pop PS series so they can see it almost a whole month before it's publicly available on YouTube. Uh, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. But now Let's go do what I know you're all waiting for and see the color palette and the dye colors that I've selected for it today. This is the colorway that the patron selected. A dark navy color, our chartreuse, and then a bright purple. And here are the three dye colors that I picked to go with this palette. Uh, Dharma Acid Dyes in Chartreuse, Royal Purple, and Dark Navy. Now the Chartreuse and Dark Navy were obvious choices. The purple, it was harder to pick the purple. I did consider going with Hyacinth, uh, which is a more blue purple and is really lovely. However, Here's the color at a 1% depth of shade. It is a bit muted. It isn't really that bright. Uh, and so while I think it could be cool to use this alongside the chartreuse, I was debating a lot because the purple that was selected really is a bright purple. And so this is bluer, but not bright. And so that's why I ended up going with Royal Purple, which is a bright, very saturated purple, but I think I might use it at a lower depth of shade in comparison to the green, especially when we go and do some color mixing. I have used Royal Purple for a few different color mixings in the past. I have one with black, and then I recently used it in mixing secondary colors along with green and orange. And that mixed really, really beautifully. And in the past, I have also mixed Radioactive, which is very similar to Chartreuse, and Purple Pop, which is way too pink of a purple, even though it is a bright purple. And so that's also why I went with these colors. I have a lot of ideas for different techniques we can do with these colors. I probably should have sketched things out using colored pencil instead of marker because it's a little easier to layer and make things more intense. Uh, but it's fun playing around with different ways to put the colors together. I know that my uh, bright green marker is showing up a little bit blue on camera, uh, but I guess that is what it is. I usually like to start off these color challenges doing some kind of color mixing, but since I'm pretty sure the navy is going to be our dominant color here, I decided to do a grid instead of some kind of triangle. And so in every row, we're going to mix the royal purple and chartreuse. Um, at least we'll see how the first row of it goes. And then in rows two through five, we will increase the amount of navy blue to see how that comes into play with the color. And so this will ultimately give us what would have been most of the outside of the triangle. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But I think the royal purple, because I'm expecting that to be more pigmented than the chartreuse, for the purposes of this today, I'm going to cut all the royal purple dye in half. 
So that way we're using uh, double the amount of chartreuse to the amount of royal purple. At least I think. I still need to work out the numbers here. And then I do actually think that all of this will look really pretty speckled together. So we're going to do a speckled colorway. And then we'll do some kind of variegated colorway, but we might play around with the proportions a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll make the navy a little bit pastel as well. I mean, maybe we'll um, use the chartreuse at a lower depth of shade and then have the purple be darker. Uh, I haven't decided yet. But anyway, I think this is our plan for today. And then in part two, depending on what the patrons pick, we've got a lot of other options for techniques. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves to start making dye stocks. I technically have a small dye stock of royal purple already, but whenever I'm going to do color mixing, I like to mix the dyes up fresh. That way I know things are really well mixed and freshly mixed and anything that might settle is well suspended, so we're most likely to get uh, the most accurate re reproducible results. To make a 1% stock solution, uh, you need to measure out one gram of dye and dissolve it in 100 milliliters of vol total volume. And so I'm not measuring out the same amount of dye for each of these colors. I'm making a larger navy dye stock because that's a color that's handy for me to have around. And then I'm using less of the chartreuse and royal purple because I don't need quite as much of that on hand. So if I'm measuring out five grams of one of the colors, then I will be dissolving that in 500 milliliters etc. And I used hot tap water to dissolve the dyes and stir them up as much as they needed. For our color mixing today, we're going to use Wolta Dye Force Platinum Fingering Weight Yarn Mini Skeins. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino Wool, 25% Nylon. And then for everything else, we're going to use Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which has the same fiber content and almost exactly the same yardage. I think Stroll is 462 yards per 100 grams and Platinum is either 461 or 463. Uh, so it's very, very similar. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-soak all of the yarn for at least 30 minutes off camera. I realized I was making things a little bit more complicated for myself because we weren't gonna have the same amount of dye in each container with the way I am setting things up. And so, I messed around with a few different ratios of how to do the dye, and I ended up deciding to go with uh, my less saturated plan overall, because we can always add more dye to each of the containers, but we won't be able to remove it if things end up being way too navy heavy. So I set up 25 takeout containers and added one cup of cool tap water to each cup. Then I started adding some of our dye mixture. And I'm gonna list the volumes of our 1% stock solutions we are adding uh, in the video description. Using between 10 and 1.25 milliliters of dark navy, and using between 1.25 and 5 milliliters of our royal purple, and then between 2.5 and 10 milliliters of our chartreuse. It's always worth checking out the video description if you want to replicate any of my results because not only will I try to keep track of the amount of acid that I'm using and things like that, but I also have links and affiliate links to my favorite tools and the yarn bases I'm using and things like that. There's so much great information down there. Looking at just the dyes mixed, it can be a little hard to tell what the actual colors look like. So I went ahead and added in our 20 gram mini skeins into each container. We haven't added any acid in here yet, so the colors likely won't start striking to the yarn until we go ahead and add that acid. I ran out of my 20 gram minis, which surprised me. So in these two cups, I put two 10 gram minis in each. I wonder if I'll find out I accidentally doubled something up. Now, one thing we can notice right away is this happens a lot when I do a grid. It looks like that I have a light source here, and so everything else is in shadow. <laughs> But the other thing I want to point out is that the proportions that I picked, starting with this would be a 0.5% depth of shade of chartreuse. This is a 0.25% depth of shade of royal purple. And so that ratio, where here in the center we have two parts green, one part purple, gave us something that feels neither green nor purple. I think that I listened to my gut and I created something that gave us 
something more cohesive. If I had used the purple at the same proportions, we could have expected to see a bunch of these colors shifted down more and the green would have been a lot more of an outlier. I think when I group these as sets, I'm gonna be grouping them in columns because I like the way that those sets feel like they work together slightly more than some of the rows. I like the darker ones, like this is like a nice more t forest green going all the way to that deep purple, but I think that even with this more brown, there's more, I don't know, there's a more cohesion as a set than I'm personally drawn to, but anyway. Now I need to add acid to each of these containers. So I added one teaspoon of white vinegar to each container, stirred it a little bit, and then I put on numbered lids so that way I would be able to keep track of which color goes where. And I set these aside to sit at room temperature over the weekend, and then we'll come back on Monday morning and see how these colors turned out and finish heat setting them. I was only supposed to wait till Monday, but it's actually Thursday. And so now we're gonna finally take a look at the yarn and prepare to heat set things. Now that our yarn has absorbed all of the dye, and just to check, I think this is our most pigmented color, and it's looking like all of the color is in fact in the yarn. Maybe there's a little bit of pink. Interesting, from a combination of navy and green. Strange. But anyway, we are ready to start heat setting things. But before we do, I wanted to point out a couple of things. This is a 0.5% depth of shade of chartreuse, and this is a 0.25% depth of shade of royal purple. This color right here is the closest we have to a one-to-one -one ratio between those two colors. Uh, because then when we go to the next one down, this color right here is two parts green, one part purple. This one is a little bit more purple than green. This color right here is one part purple, one part navy. We don't actually have navy on its own. It definitely is gonna be the dominant color of the bottom row. And because it's such a common color, I didn't feel like it was needed to have just a navy row like we had for the other colors. But this is a very beautiful, uh, almost, indigo kind of shade. Maybe it reminds me a little bit of Intense Iris. And this color right here, the confusing one that had a little bit of pink left in it, is our one-to-one -one ratio of the chartreuse and the dark navy. Um, and it gave us a color that is darker than deep teal, and it's less green than forest green, but it still is very green leaning, I would say. And then the rest, we've got a lot of really beautiful colors here. <laughs> But those were the particular shades that I wanted to point out right now. I am now gonna group the yarn by column uh, and put them on removable nylon zip ties and then go ahead and steam set the yarn for 30 minutes. There's a chance that there might be some color transfer from the deeper colors to the brighter ones, specifically onto that 0.5% depth of shade of chartreuse, but I'm gonna let that be a risk of the process here today. Having a little bit of color left behind doesn't necessarily mean that there will be color transfer. However, um, I my hands are a little bit stained. I wasn't wearing gloves and they're stained a little bit, I don't know, navy or what. And so therefore, there likely will be color transfer from the way that I've just put everything in the same steamer basket all together. Uh, and if I had more time and other dye pots available than I could have done it in a slower process. And even with these brighter colors along the top, I could have put them in in these containers themselves. These can handle being steamed. So that's something that you could do if, uh, I don't know, I guess I was rushing. But anyway, we're gonna steam all of this yarn for 30 minutes. All right, the timer is up. And let's do a quick little check. This is the one I'm most interested in. Do I see transfer? Not immediately, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just let all the yarn cool completely. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wash it off camera unless I see something notable and then I'll showcase the washing. But we did wash all of the other yarn from this video on camera. So I think that I'm not expecting any blading. 
For our second colorway, I decided we were gonna go for speckles. So I took 400 grams of our stroll and added a few tablespoons of white vinegar to the pre-soak. So that way they would be soaked in acid. One of these skeins will become our yarn mop where I'm gonna wipe dry powder off of my gloves and then maybe we'll use it with leftover dye towards the end of the video as well. And then the other three skeins will be for our countertop speckles. I spread out the yarn onto a protected work surface. This is an Ikea shower curtain that I use on my countertop. And then while wearing my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, I started speckling on dye powder using our three colors. Going the heaviest with the navy and the purple and using our chartreuse as more of an accent. Once I'd added color to one side, I carefully flipped it over, trying not to rub the yarn on the countertop because I didn't want the dye to get super spread out. And then I added speckles to the other side, potentially flipping again to add more speckles and coverage towards the interior of the skein. If you want, it's okay to wait a couple of minutes in between flips to give the dye a little bit of time to soak into the yarn, and so then you're less likely to have fallout as you're going about this. Once I was satisfied with the coverage of the dye on the yarn, I went ahead and steamed the yarn in a steamer basket on the stovetop for 30 minutes. Sometimes it can be hard to get a sense of a countertop speckled colorway until you apply heat because some colors do shift um, or change a little bit once the heat is applied. But I wasn't worried about how this colorway would turn out because I know that these three colors as speckles together will be really, really pretty. With our dark purple, our navy, which sometimes can feel a little purple, and then the bright contrast of the chartreuse. Finally, I took our yarn mop and wiped up most of the dye, as much as the dye that remained on the countertop, as I could. Yes, this was going to spread out the colors more on this mop, but again, that isn't such a big deal because the goal is to soak up the dye and the colors will blend on here, similar to how maybe we saw some of the colors blend when we did our color mixing exercise. Once the steamer basket was empty, I would go ahead and steam set this yarn mop for about 10 minutes or so off camera. So then we could have it on hand to use as a mop for our third colorway. Even if you could consider this mop a third colorway, we'll likely consider it the fourth. <laughs> I low-key love this blank. I love the pops of chartreuse there. I'm unsure how I feel about the speckled colorway. Uh, the chartreuse spread a lot more than the other colors, but there was some spread all over. So again, once that's done heating, we'll take a closer look, but I just love this. And so wanted to highlight it. It's been 30 minutes and we're gonna remove this yarn. The chartreuse definitely spread out a lot. But with the heat, especially the navy and the purples have bloomed more. And I love that the royal purple has these little hints of pink. Uh, that's something I think actually makes it balance with the chartreuse even better. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside to cool completely so then we can wash it. For our variegated colorway, we're starting cold with no acid. And my plan is to take some of these dye stocks that we made up already to apply the color to the yarn and hopefully move it through the yarn a bit before we come in and add acid. Now, I think that we have a shot of getting some reasonable spread and coverage on the yarn, but I don't know. Sometimes this works better with dry powder, but we'll see how things go and how we're feeling about the colors as we go. I think my plan is to take just a couple milliliters of the chartreuse and dilute that in water so I can spread it out more. And then do something very similar with the navy, diluting the dye, spreading it out further so we have a more medium toned color. And then depending on how those two colors looked, I decided where I was gonna go more with the purple. Sort of again, editing things as we go along. Here is the variegated colorway. I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I think that this would be pretty with a brighter green, but the chartreuse is so yellow. I don't know. I don't know if I wanna pump it up or what, but we're gonna, we're gonna go with this and kinda of see, see how it goes. I've already added some acid, but before we turn on heat, because we don't have like a ton of liquid in here, 
I think what I want to do is let this sit for 20 to 30 minutes just as is. Um, and then we can add a little bit more water to it to start then heating it up over on my stove. So yeah, I would say we'll wait, goodness, 20 to 30 minutes and then go from there. With our variegated color white, it's been oh, 20 minutes or so. And I'm curious how things are striking. The navy I knew was striking pretty well. And okay, we've got some pinks left with our purple, but otherwise, so far it looks like a lot of that color is staying. Now, I'm gonna turn on the heat. We're now on top two burners on my stove, and I've got about four cups of water. And I'm gonna be slowly adding it to the green end. And the reason why I'm adding the water down there is that's gonna create some movement heading this way. And I don't want to encourage the purples to travel back too much. Uh, and so by adding the water here, I'm hoping that we'll see most shift comes towards the, towards the purple. And the nice thing is that now we have more, I guess more water down here. Now I am gonna add a little bit of liquid down here just because I want some liquid down near the corner. What I'm not doing right now is adding more acid because I did add a lot to start with. Uh, maybe I added three cups of water total, but we added multiple cups of water while we were setting up the colorway. So I'm going to keep the rest of that water sort of in reserve um, in case I need it later. But now just kind of submerging things. And we're gonna heat this for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes and there's a hint of some pinks left over here, but otherwise it looks like the colors have absorbed. So I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the yarn here in the pan to cool off slowly. And once it's cooled completely, then we'll go ahead and wash this with everything else. We have enough dyes here to do another leave no dye behind colorway. Uh, there are remnants in the cups from when we made dye stocks. Uh, there's some of the leftover purple that I mixed for the variegated colorway. And then there is a lot of navy dye that came off of the lid of the new navy, dark navy acid dye container that I had to open up while making stocks. So I know that this color is gonna lean very, very navy. But I started rinsing out all of these containers and adding the dye mixture into a two liter glass jar because we're gonna kettle dye this final colorway. While waiting for a space to open up on the stove, I took a skein of Nitpick Stroll that pre-soaked in the same water plus vinegar that I used for the speckling and just dunked it into this container. Uh, I was curious what kind of color we would get and how quickly it might soak up the color. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, it was a lot of navy. Uh, I think more than I could have potentially anticipated, but I don't think that there was like a whole gram of dye left on that lid. I don't think it was nearly that much, but whew, we got some saturation going on here. I carefully transferred the yarn into a dye bath that was just warm water and then poured in the extra dye. I added a couple tablespoons of white vinegar and then crossed my fingers that everything would absorb and set a timer for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the water had cleared, and so I turned off the heat to let things cool off so I could wash it. When it was time to wash the yarn, I started off washing the speckled colorway and the yarn mop. And I don't know, I held my breath a little bit, but there was no color bleeding even when we added soap. The reason why sometimes I get nervous about speckled colorways, particularly countertop speckles, is that if I add a little bit too much dye, there could still be a little bit of powder that wasn't dissolved on the surface. So sometimes you can have bleeding. Uh, but this time we were good to go. Next, I started washing the variegated color white and we had some pinks bleeding out from the purple section. And this continued with the addition of soap 
couple of rinses, I added in the pre-soak that had a little bit of vinegar in it and just left the yarn to sit for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes or so. And then once I came back, I washed that a few more times and that pink had resolved. But it actually was a lot paler before even adding the acid. So I think we successfully rinsed that out. Our last colorway I am going to wash off camera and it'll be a couple of days before I wash our little tonals. But I put everything through my spin dryer and hung it up to dry. Of course, by the time we're at this washing section of the video, I know you've already seen me finish the tonals. So <laughs> things are out of order sometimes. Let's start by looking at our color mixing. I've zoomed out a bit so I can put up the relative depth of shade of each of the three colors. So based on the percent, you know how many grams of say purple there are per 100 grams of yarn, which then would allow you to calculate a recipe for any of these colors going forward. But there's one other number that interested me, and that is the total depth of shade. So rather than looking at the individual colors, how much dye, how many total grams of dye were there per 100 grams of yarn for all of the samples? And you can see that we do have a wide variation here because unlike when I'm doing a triangle color mixing exercise and I try to have everything be the same at whether it's 1% or a half percent depth of shade, here there is just a lot more variation. So the total amount of dye did vary a lot more. Now that the yarn is dry, you can see more variation in the deepest colors. But I still think I'm gonna group these by columns instead of rows to make fade sets. And that is because I think that the bottom three rows are stunning fade sets. Uh, but when we look at the top two rows, the jump of the bright purple to the more muted colors stands out just a hair. It's not as smooth a transition. And of course our chartreuse also does uh, jump out a fair amount. And so that is the only reason why I think I'm gonna group by rows because here, this is bright, but it kind of goes with this deepening feeling of the yarn and so it just works. And so that's the way I'll group them into sets to put in my shop. Oh, and I don't know what happened to the other two 20 gram mini skeins that we're missing. Uh, two of the bundles will have two 10 gram minis, but yeah, I, there nowhere was the yarn like accidentally doubled up. One thing we didn't do in the sample was have a tonal that was just navy. All of these samples on the bottom had a 0.5% depth of shade of dark navy plus another color. And here, it's a different yarn base, but it's yarn that I dyed recently that is a 0.5% uh, depth of shade of dark navy, just as a comparison. Now remember, depth of shade not only is a comparison of the dye to itself in different amounts, but on the same yarn base. And this two-ply yarn that I just put down uh, definitely has a very glazed feel to it, which is why the color maybe feels a little bit different. Um, but you can see that uh, the samples that we've mixed are either a little bit more green or a little bit more red, which makes sense. <laughs> and as I'm starting to twist up the minis, I see no evidence of any color transfer, which is always wonderful. <laughs> I love starting color challenges with some color mixing because it helps me get a good feel of both how the colors might blend together and which colors are much more potent or much more pigmented. So that way, if I want them all to have impact, I have a better idea of how to balance them. But now we're looking at something where I don't really have as much control over the level of the colors because we speckled onto this yarn. Even though I added less chartreuse overall, it definitely spread a lot more. Uh, you can see that the countertop speckles of the purple and the navy both feel a little bit more speckled. So in some places there are larger splotches, but overall it feels more speckled. But then we have these like almost like acidic dashes of the chartreuse color. I actually am really enjoying the color combination. The chartreuse is feeling way more yellow than I guess the green that maybe I would have expected it to do with speckling, uh, but that's partially because of the pigments in their breaking. If you look at the center of any of the chartreuse specks, 
you can see a more green color. There's a blue pigment in there that is striking faster than what is likely a fluorescent yellow pigment, which is one of the ones that spreads more. Now that I'm really thinking about this, I think one colorway that could be really fun would be to start with a chartreuse base and then to do the purple and blue countertop speckles on top of it. Some of the purples might start to lean a little bit more brown, but you get really cool muted purples when you have a lot more purple than chartreuse, which with speckling on a more medium toned base is likely what we would see. And so there's a chance that that could look really, really cool. Now, I would love to contrast the speckled colorway with our first yard mop. Here, we're seeing a lot less of the pure bright chartreuse, although we do have a little bit, and it is more green than yellow because when wiping my gloves on, I was able to spread the blue pigments a little more. But the colors here are overall much softer. There are still a little bit of speckles, but oof, it goes, they go so well. Um, and I think that, I'm not entirely sure how well it would work as a set, but imagine starting with the speckled, going into the yarn mop, and then transitioning to the variegated colorway. Now, this is one that I really want to see knit up. <laughs> um, I think that there's an element that's fun. I mean, purple and yellow are on opposite sides of the color wheel. And I think that it is a lot of fun using the navy as not the deepest color. I really am happy that I went for that. I'm just not entirely sure how I feel about this. Maybe the chartreuse should have been much smaller overall, and we should have had more than three color sections. And so if we had like a tiny bit of chartreuse within all that navy as like a pop of color versus a larger contributor, I don't really know. But I will say that the technique with applying the liquid dyes on and moving it around, that ended up working out really nicely. Uh, the coverage is soft. The navy definitely struck pretty quickly, but we were using less dye there overall. And I'm overall really happy with how the technique worked with these colors. Now, these colorways might pull. They might because, well, they're more regular sections. However, the length of each of the sections is a little bit soft. There are slight differences. So I don't think it would work for, say, planned pulling, but this is a type of colorway that, depending on the gauge and stitches, it's likely to pull. Ooh, this would be fun woven. <gasps> Ooh. Twisting up the variegated yarn isn't quite the same thing as knitting a swatch, but I really like the combination of the chartreuse and the purple here. This suddenly feels very floral to me, very much like a flower blossom, and I'm much more excited seeing the contrast of the purple and the yellow. Finally, we had one final yarn mop that was basically just all the dyes that are left over, and it's hard to call this anything other than a tonal navy. Uh, I'm sure that there might be some difference in the hue if I were to use the exact same amount of just dark navy dye, but it's hard to say. I'm not seeing any evidence of breaking or glazing or anything like that here. Let's take just one more look at the color mixing we did on the top row. Can you imagine that as, say, woven stripes with maybe the navy as the warp uh, in a woven scarf? Or even just knit, just seeing that color progression is so fun. Uh, I really need to do some kind of color mixing like this to then use all in one project. I think that that would be awesome. And if we look at the bottom row, the navy leave no dye behind is a little bit of a standout from the way that these colors may work together, but we could create some colors to go in between the variegated and the darkest navy, or the darkest navy could be used as stripes and you can have like sort of the blending of the other colors happen within stripes and I don't know, there, there's a lot of ideas of things that you could do with these colors all together. 
I would like to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Chemnitz Fiber patrons, including Jessica Parco, Don Jans, Karen Siegel, Tamara Svanez, and the rest of the names you see right here. Patreon is a really awesome platform, and not only do the Chemnitz patrons get to give input into the color palette selection and sometimes techniques I do in the Dye Pop PS series, but there's other fun perks such as advanced notice of Chemnitz Creations shop restocks and even permanent coupons and shout outs depending on the level. You can find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you have enjoyed part one of the color challenge. Believe it or not, there were over two and a half hours of footage that went into this video, but it's a lot of fun to showcase different techniques using the same color palette all in one video because hopefully that helps encourage you to think of other things that you can do with some of your favorite color combinations or maybe color combinations you've never tried before. This is actually one huge reason why I love doing the Chemnitz Dialogue because it's fun to see how with one inspiration color palette how many different types of colorways people can create. But anyway, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the new videos. I post at least twice a week and we have lots of bonus content as well and you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching.